This disc is for use with the TurboGrafx-16 CD-ROM system only. So this is my TurboGrafx episode. This is an episode I've wanted to do as well for a long time, where I just can have a look at the TurboGrafx, have a look back on the CD-ROM attachment, and have a look at some of the games. You know, it was great. I was going through all my uh, TurboGrafx stuff, and I found some of these old uh, pamphlets. Here's an old one, uh, the Turbo Force magazine. That's kind of neat, eh? Turbo Play. Hopefully you can see that there, that's pretty awesome. An old TurboGrafx flyer that showed, um, showed the system, showed all that stuff. Um, talked about some of the games that are coming out. There's a bigger list of all the games. I had the TurboGrafx, which was a great machine, uh, but then I heard that an, you know, an add-on was coming, a CD-ROM system. And um, it was actually one of the first CD-ROM systems for a console. I convinced my parents, and I don't know how I did this, I convinced them to get me this CD-ROM extra. I think it was like $3.99 US just for a CD-ROM attachment. You know, it was expensive. Think of it as how much a Blu-ray player costs nowadays. So, this is kind of funny. And I, <laughs> I, I actually, um, in my parents' old place, uh, they had a loft upstairs. And when it was just like a one month to Christmas, I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm such a bad kid. I, I want to see what's in the loft. I, I had some funny, strange feeling. So I went up into the loft, and my girlfriend at the time was downstairs, uh, well, the bottom of the stairs, you know, looking up at me as I'm crawling around up there. And I just see this massive box all wrapped up in paper. And I'm like, what the hell is this? And um, I kind of tore open a little edge of it. I could tell what it was at that point. It was the CD-ROM add-on, and I just freaked out. But I really freaked out. There's a little um, package besides that, and I opened it up, and it was Easebooks One and Two. And I, I remember started screaming like a girl up in, my, in a loft, and my girlfriend was downstairs, and she's like, "Why are you getting so excited about it?" She just didn't get it, obviously. So I feel bad uh, that I had to sneak um, a look at my uh, Christmas presents before I got them. But you know what? I have a fond memory of that. It, I still absolutely Christmas morning. I got a chance to play it. So let's have a look at the Turbo Graphics. Here is the machine. Here is how, what it looks like. Basically, there's a little switch on the side here. You can pop the CD-ROM out. So here's the Turbo Graphics. And here's the CD-ROM add-on, and you went click, kaboom, like that. It came with um, system card one, and when the Turbo Duo came out, which was the whole machine in one, it came up, with, you know, the upgraded version of the system card, which was 3.0. I was kind of screwed, right? I, I wanted to play Super CD-ROM games on my machine, but I couldn't do it because I had the old system card, and I actually bought the Japanese Super System uh, card. And then I bought an, a, a video game adapter, TV game computer cartridge converter, um, to allow me to play Japanese games on my Turbo Duo. So I just put the CD-ROM card in here, and voila, I became a super CD-ROM system. And that allowed me to play a lot of games. Easebooks 1 and 2, I've already talked enough about it, I got a review up, check that one out. Easebooks 3 and Easebooks 4. Legendary Axe, I absolutely love this game too. This is where you play as the prehistoric caveman and you're running around fighting giant spiders and bears and stuff like that. Ghost Warrior Spragon, a fantastic shooter, a fantastic shooter. I actually have Loom, the old LucasArts game, that's pretty okay. Dragon Slayer, The Legend of Heroes by Falcom, same company who did um, Xbox One and Two. Traditional role playing game, um, the voice acting is horrible, it's the worst voice acting you've ever heard in your life. The game was great, I finished it back in the day. Forgotten Worlds, good old Capcom. You know, that's classic Capcom right there. Flash Hiders, not many people have heard of this game. It's a fighting game. Uh, it was one of the first few fighting games on the uh, Turbo Duo. Here we go. This, actually, I love on the back it says CD. Fighting Street, which is actually Street Fighter 1. This is actually one of the very first console CD-ROM games ever released. Check that one out. Go back in time and check that out. That is actually true. Hoo hoo, Rondo. This game on the Turbo Graphics, uh, on the Turbo Duo, was going for like $140 at one time. 
Um, and then finally, uh, Konami released the PSP version, and I think I think we've seen a you know a drop in the price. But this used to be the, one of the most highly sought out games on the Turbo Duo. Now here's a series of games that I absolutely love: the Far East of Eden series, a series that has never ever been released in this country. We got Far East of um, Eden One, Zeria, Far East of Eden Two, Maru, and Kabuki Dan. I love this game. I love Kabuki as a character. He's one of my favorite video game characters of all time. Macross, strategy game on the Turbo Duo. Ha! Ha ha! I had to. This one makes me laugh. Uh, Final Zone 2, which arguably has the worst voice acting in any video game. Oh, there's another game that actually rivals its terrible voice acting, and that is Last Alert. Both of these games are serious gems and contenders for the worst voice acting of all time in any game. Here's a game, this is a great one, uh, Magical. Let's check out the bag there too. Two player action role playing game like Zelda. Like most Turbo Duo games over here, nobody's ever heard of these. But these are some serious gems. Keith Courage and Alpha Zones, the game that everybody got with their Turbo Graphics. Here's a gem. This game was only released through a, a PC Engine magazine giveaway. You could not buy it in stores, so it is very hard to find. And it features my favorite video game character of all time, Kabuki. And it is Kabuki Den Den. It is a, a Bomberman game with only Kabuki as playable characters. So everybody who plays it plays as Kabuki. Fantasy Zone. I think everybody in Japan who had a Turbo Graphics or a Turbo Duo or a Turbo a Core Duo or whatever had this game. It was really popular in arcades in Japan. Really, really popular. Burai 1 and 2, these are uh, obviously a Japanese role-playing game uh, that never came out over here. Okay, you know, I am the happy console gamer and I actually usually only talk about games that I like. But since I'm talking about all my duo collection, I am gonna talk about a game that I absolutely detest. Double fucking dungeons. Oh, I don't even like talking about it. I get so angry. I bought this back in 91. It's actually a split-screen um, maze game that you can play with a friend of yours. That sounded pretty good. The only problem is the game. That is the problem. This game is the problem. It's horrible. All the levels look exactly the same. I mean, it's just you quite literally are a mat, you know, a rat in, in, in a maze. It's horrible, like, that's fine, it's a fucking maze game. But this game is stinks, man. Like, god damn it. I was so angry. I remember I was in Reno, and I bought Double Dungeons, and Final Fantasy 1, Final Fantasy 1 on the NES. I came back, well, you know obviously what I played and what I didn't. Yeah, this game got turf, man, it got gone, like... Oh my god, the music was the same. The graphics were horrendous. It was just the most appalling game known to mankind. Get this fucking thing out of here. Why is there no Snatcher on like the PSP? Like this game has a huge cult following in the States. And a lot of people don't have the Sega CD version. That was the only version released in the States. And they want a way to play this game. There's no, uh, it's not on the virtual console, on the Wii or anything like that. Konami, why didn't you release this on the PSP? That would be a really good idea. This is actually one of my upcoming episodes. I'm going to do a big thing on the Ninja Warriors, one of my favorite arcade games of all time. Newtopia, a complete Zelda clone. It is really a Zelda clone. Here's a game, Military Madness. This, this was out before Advance Wars. This is like one of the first strategy games I ever played um, on a console. And I finished the one player game, loved it. And then this game lived on for years for me and a friend of mine. We used to play this like probably once every couple of weeks for years. Our matches became so challenging against each other. Uh, it was two player all the way for this game with me. Cosmic Fantasy 2. Nobody's ever heard of this game. They, I think they went, they went up to number four in Japan, maybe even number five, but we only got number two, sadly. Working Designs brought this out, if everybody remembers Working Designs. So this is just my uh, look back on the Turbo Duo. Uh, great machine. Um, it's been so much fun over the years. I'm still having fun with it, even today. Give it a shot. Check out the Turbo Duo. Till next time.